most of us are deficient in magnesium. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Butts and I'm a doctor of dental surgery. And this channel is all about health and wellness for you to be healthy and wealthy. All I wanna do is make you, help you optimize what you got going on with your health, all right? And today, we're diving into a super important topic about magnesium. It's something many of us are missing out on and is crucial for our health, all right? So let's find out why so many Americans are low on magnesium and why it matters and how you can make sure you're getting enough, all right? So the number one thing is that there's a huge magnesium deficiency in America. Now, is that, is that anything to be like, well, what do you mean? America, one of the greatest countries in the world? What, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you already know, if you don't know, well, you're about to know, that they've been messing with our food, guys. They've been messing with it. And there's a lot of processed foods that are even more processed now. And please note that they don't have anything like magnesium in it for us. Mm -mm. This food right now is made for convenience and it's not made for health. So we may have to start growing our own food or uh, just being more conscientious about where we're getting our food from. We wanna get it from a correct source, right? So I have a favorite person that I listen to, right? And her name is Dr. Rhonda Patrick. And she has done some deep dives into this issue about the find, and the findings are pretty eye-opening, okay? So the National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey has shows widespread magnesium deficiency. Now, when you say widespread, it's like, what, what do you mean? Why, why is it widespread? But here we go, okay? Um, we're talking about millions of people here. And why are we deficient? is because we eat a lot of processed foods and not enough whole foods. It's really just as simple as that. Soil depletion from modern farming practices are stripping magnesium from the soil. Gut issues, and which would be like conditions like Crohn's disease and celiac disease can mess with how we absorb magnesium. And you gotta consider, we have a lot of gluten in our food, in so many foods, and that messes with our health. Now, I'm a doctor of dental surgery. I mean, it's a, I'm a dentist, and I do give antibiotics when I do a procedure. I want to either make sure that we're preventing any possible infection, or uh, if you have an infection, we're going to get rid of it. But even some meds like what I give, diuretics and antibiotics, can deplete magnesium levels. So I try to remind my patients what they need to do before, after procedures, because really it's about whole body health. When people come see me, no one ever just brings their teeth. They bring their whole body. And teeth are just different tissues in the body that I am a specialist in, but they can show things that are going on with the body. So that's why we review these things, because I love you all. And I wanna be as helpful as possible to you all, all right? So, magnesium is super important because it has multiple, multiple factors in the body. As a matter of fact, magnesium is a cofactor in over 300 enzymatic reactions, right? So, enzymes and enzymatic reactions are basically the process, the, the mechanics of how our bodies work to breathe, to digest, to have thoughts, to move, to exercise. Those are, those, all of those processes um, have an enzymatic reaction that basically is needed in order for that action to start and finish, right? So there's another thing. There's something called ATP production. Now, this is what's called your energy currency. And magnesium is essential for making ATP. How about this? DNA and RNA, that's, that's what really makes us up. You need magnesium to make and repair genetic material, okay? How about protein synthesis, all right? It helps turn amino acids into proteins. Now, this channel got popular because I started talking about the blood type diet. And the blood type diet, as I am an old blood type, I found 
through my own results that we need to eat meat. And the reason why bloat old blood type people need to eat meat is because we have a very high acid stomach content. And if we just ate proteins, we wouldn't be able to break down the proteins that are, are I'm sorry, if we just ate vegetables, we wouldn't be able to break down the proteins that are in the vegetables and they wouldn't be plentiful enough for us to make and do what we have to make and do in order to get our enzymatic reactions going, right? So I found that eating meat sometimes is good for me because I'm able to break down those amino acids and use them to build up, build up my own proteins, right? So here are some health benefits of magnesium, okay? So muscle and nerve function. So magnesium re regulates muscle contractions and nerve signals, okay? It is crucial for blood control and insulin metabolism. How about this? Blood pressure regulation. This helps keep your blood pressure in check. How about this other one? Bone health, which is actually my area because I do implants and I wanna make sure that my patients, once I've done an implant for them, that they're healing and that their bone formation around the implants to make them even stronger than when I first put them in happens, okay? Well, it actually is important for bone formation and calcium formation and regulation, all right? Um, and how about heart health? This keeps our heart beating steady and prevents arrhythmias, all right? So we're gonna talk about some mechanisms of magnesium in the body, okay? So we're gonna talk about the cellular level. So that is just in our cells that make up every part or different cells that make up our organs, our bones, our skin, right? So magnesium as a cofactor all right, it activates enzymes involved in energy metabolism. So the interaction with ATP, it binds to ATP and it stabilizes the molecule for energy transfer, all right? And now let's talk about a little bit of the neurologic impact, okay? So there is this receptor that we have which is called NMDA receptors, okay? And magnesium blocks calcium channels in those receptors preventing excessive neuronal firing and, excite, and cytotoxicity, all right? So basically, it makes it so that we can be even calm and not shake too much, like when I'm doing my yoga, and I just wanna shake so much because I'm sweating, all right? Well, that right there is what we need, okay? So how about this? It also helps support GABA function. So GABA activity, which promotes relaxation and reduces anxiety, all right? So magnesium and calcium regulation, it competes with calcium to prevent excessive muscle contraction, right? And now we're gonna talk about how in muscle relaxation, it's essential for the relaxation phase after muscle contraction, all right? In the cardiovascular impact, it basically, the vascular smooth muscles, it helps relax blood vessels, reducing hypertension. And then in terms of your heart, arrhythmia is basically a, is an off heartbeat. It's too fast, it's too slow, it goes crazy. But arrhythmia prevention using magnesium, it stabilizes cardiac cells, reducing the risk of abnormal heart rhythms, all right? So there are some signs of magnesium deficiency that you can look for in yourself, all right? Now, uh, when I say this, this is not like a drug commercial where I'm gonna rattle off a thousand things <laughs> that I'm sure that somebody's got something like of it, all right? So I'm gonna say these things, but don't let this get you sick, all right? Don't, don't let this get you sick. So muscle cramps and spasms. Now wait, just because you have muscle cramps and spasms does not necessarily mean that you are magnesium deficient, but it's a possibility, all right? So fatigue and weakness, nausea and vomiting, numbness and tingling, abnormal heart rhythms, long-term deficiency risks of lack of magnesium could be osteoporosis, which is just basically brittle bones, high blood pressure, type two diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Now, you may see or find, you're like, wait a minute, I, I've got high blood pressure. Right? I don't have high blood pressure, but you might take high blood pressure medication. You might take medication for your type 2 diabetes, which is 
the most curable, reversible diabetes. Type 1 is when your insulin creator has been attacked by a virus and it no longer works at all, so you have to give yourself um, insulin. But type 2 is just basically we have been eating or not eating the foods that we should or should not eat. And we are not exercising, we're not getting enough rest, we, we can be smoking, but these are the ways that someone can get type 2 diabetes. And obviously, we can be deficient in something as simple as magnesium. And hopefully, hopefully, your doctor would, would check on your magnesium levels before they say, oh, you have high blood pressure or you have type 2 diabetes or these, this cardiovascular disease that we have, we have to give you medication for it. Please make sure that you're checking in with your doctor because, and I'm just going to do a public service announcement right here, okay? You are responsible for your own health, whether you get health advice from me, which is I'm just talking about health, or your doctor, right, who is also talking about health, right? And you will get this information and then you have to make a decision as to what you're going to do or not do. Right? So, some people like candy. They like Hershey's Kisses. Great. The only thing about Hershey's Kisses is that it's got uh, corn oil in it. It's not very good for you. It's not good for you at all, actually. All right? Um, you may sleep with the television on. You may look at blue light on your phone before you go to sleep, and that messes with your sleep. These are things that maybe you didn't know. And because you didn't know them, they can be affecting what's going on in your body. We're just trying to dial it down. But again, you being responsible for your own health is going to make it so that you start looking for the things that will make you more healthy. And that's really what we need to do. All right. So how, how do we get enough magnesium? All right. So it's just basically dietary sources, right? So green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale. Nuts and seeds like almonds and pumpkin seeds are great. Actually, I did a little video on how great pumpkin seeds are. Please check out that video. Whole grains like brown rice and quinoa. Legumes like black beans and chickpeas. Fish like mackerel and salmon. And dark chocolate, but go for the high cacao content varieties, all right? And then of course, there's supplementation. There's many different types of supplements. And I'm going to give you the supplement list. But not all of these supplements are the same. So please check with your doctor if you're trying to supplement with some magnesium, which magnesium that you should take or which magnesium would be best and most effective for you. So here's the list. Magnesium citrate, magnesium glycinate, and magnesium oxide. All right? Make sure you get the right ones, okay? They say typically, typically, the recommended, look, the recommended doses dosages mm -hmm. are typically 200 to 400 milligrams a day. But again, check with your health care provider just so that he can, you can just check on, hey, I'm going to do this. What do you think, doc? Hopefully they'll say do that. Do that, hopefully, right? And then here's some absorption tips, okay? Take, take it with a meal, okay, to improve the absorption and avoid high doses of calcium at the same time because they compete for the same receptors, all right? So... Magnesium deficiency is super common in the U.S. And now that you know that this is a possible problem that you might have, now you, at least you can go try to find out, see what's going on. Hey, let me check my magnesium levels and, and how am I doing, right? So, and, and signs of deficiency should not be ignored, okay? So ensure adequate intake through diet and supplementation if, nexus, if necessary, all right? So... Take a look at your magnesium intake and where you stand, okay? Chat with your healthcare provider to get personalized advice, okay? Guys, that was so fast, all right? Thank you so much for waiting and hanging out till the end. If you found this video helpful, please send it to a friend. Oh, please hit that like button. It really helps with the algorithm. <gasps> We've been growing, guys. More people have been listening. Some people have been getting angry. <laughs> Some people are still on their blood type diet thing. They're still on their blood type O thing. But that's okay, that's okay. You don't have to agree with me, okay? Just listen. 
open your minds, my friends. Open your minds, all right? And by the way, I have a free, free health benefits guide right down here in the description. Please check that out. It's just my tricks and tips uh, for mastering and managing what I consider five points of health, which is food, sleep, exercise, detoxification, and mindfulness behavior. We're gonna talk about a couple other little things a little bit later. Thank you.